Hi guys, how are you going? Let me just make a start here. Okay, let's try and bring this up on screen. Bear, me, bear with me just a second. And my tablet is upside down. I'm doing great. How are we all this evening? Are we all good? Lovely. So, hello, Anne. Hey, Vicky. How are you, girls? Um, cheers. Damn right. Absolutely. Hey, Soph, Amory. Tina. So it's um, Saturday night. This is something I don't do very often because I usually have some comfy pants on and am sitting at my laptop on the lounge doing some, I don't know, stuff. Um, but I thought, you know what, I'll get on and do some creating. Trev's watching the football. Jessica is, I don't even know where Jessica is. She's with Max somewhere, so that's all cool. Um, and I thought I would do a little art journaling tonight and show you something really different and really awesome. Um, I'm just going to adjust my camera. Bear with me just a second. Because you don't need to be looking into the top of my glass of wine. Oh, that's better if I move it up a bit. And voila, you can still see my wine. But that's okay. Okay, so... What I thought I might do tonight is talk to you about a um, a process that I love to do when I have some time on my hands, because, um, you know, that's a thing. Um, I love art journaling, as you know, and I love to create. I'm not going to do the whole waffle on about um how to do things and all that sort of stuff tonight it's going to be an awful lot more casual um i've got chocolate off to the side and wine at the front so um it's it's either going to go good or it's not going to go good so we'll just wait and see <laughs> um i i've been art journaling for a while it's been an arty sort of thing that i've always loved to do um, and as a scrapbooker and card maker that I started off as, I have always worked in art journals. Yeah, I know, isn't it? Just It's good, Tina. Yeah, how are you going? Um, but yeah, I've always loved to work in art journals and this is one of my art journals. So I'm not going to do a flick through. That's not what this is about um, because I don't share my art journals with everybody publicly to be scrutinized and analyzed and picked over and copied and screenshotted and blah 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 but what I do hello Denise I miss your face by the way but what I what I will do is I like to share different techniques and things that you can do in your art journal um, my art journals are very private because they are Things that, pages that I create for me, not for anybody else. And I'm not comfortable showing everybody my art journal pages that I create for me. So, but what I do love to do is a process that I have come across called journaling by fives. So I'm going to talk to, I'm going to show you guys how to do this tonight, journaling by fives. So if you are on your phone at the moment watching screenshot this i will take a photo of it and put it up again later but this is almost a foolproof way to create an art journal page if you are wanting to learn how to art journal this is a really foolproof way so i will come back to this and refer to this again and again and again and this is these are the steps that I'm going to take tonight to create an art journal page so first and foremost this is not my idea this is something that I came across on YouTube um, a really long time ago um, by a fabulous creative called Shannon Green and then the lovely Enki Quill um, she 
she also did it as well. And um, she did it in a series that, and I can't remember her name. Um, Adele Toomey. She, um, she is the other person that I discovered this from and I thought that this was brilliant. So what I thought I would do is show you guys my take on doing journaling by fives. All right. So I have created a, a little album. This is a little art journal that I created, or big art journal, that I created a couple of years ago. And it is using the journaling by fives technique. I created all of the pages in this journal in a day. All right. So... And I did it using the steps that I just talked about, that journaling by fives, okay? So I'm going to flick through and show you some of these pages. And I'm just going to play some music and drink some wine. I'm not going to play some music. I thought about singing, but I'm not going to. Um, but show you the pages that I've made. There could be some naughty words in here too, by the way, if for those of you just tuning in. Are you singing to yourself in your head? Because you should be, because nobody needs to hear me sing. So that's that like background music that's playing, right? So everyone has their background song. Just sing that to yourself because trust me, you don't need to hear me sing. through this in ages actually it's actually really nice to go back and and have a look at it And in a minute, I'll go back and I'll explain what you are seeing. But I thought if I just give you a flick through first, just so you can see what it's all about. And then from there, you can, um, it'll all make sense when I go back and explain the process and what we are doing. So, so that's all the um, right hand side pages. So now I'll go back and show you the left hand side pages which are the backs, obviously.
And as you can see, not all the backs are finished pages um, and it doesn't actually matter too much. I'm quite happy about that. So this is my, one of my first journaling by fives mini album or albums. So what you are looking at are pages that have been created using a particular process. And like I said, that process is called the journaling by fives. And again, not my, not my um, idea. So it's creating in steps and I'm going to do it tonight. So the first step is creating a background, adding paint, ink and, and background elements. Then we are going to collage, add recycled materials, then stamps and stencils, then words, images and focal points. And then we finish off with pencil, pen and detail. So I, like I said, I will add a photo of, of this in a moment, but now that I have explained that so let me show you exactly what I mean and talk you through those elements um, let me find the perfect page to do that with because each page evolves each page I build on it becomes something else and then it uh, they just develop their own little story so let's go with this one here so this um, page is actually stuck in the, in the front of my Dilusions journal as a reminder on how to create. So I've got, this is a finished journal with um, pages in it and, and different bits and pieces, lots of unfinished pages, lots of finished pages, lots of things that I started and worked on and evolved with um, classes I've taught, etc. So um one of my very this is I think this is maybe my second or my third journal that I created but let me talk you through what you can see so paint ink background let's look at this bit here so to start with I used an old piece of scrapbooking paper as my base we all have that paper and I'll talk about that in a minute so then I, I added paint ink background so I started with the pink and the white. So as I talk about each, each, each section, look at what I'm talking about, the background. So that is the pink and the white in the background. The next step, collage recycled materials. On this particular project, we are looking at these bits here, collage recycled materials. So these are actually excess alphas, because again, you've all got those. Um, and I created a bit of an element around my page. The next bit, step number three, stamps and stencils. So stamps and stencils is exactly that. So stamping is always done in black and I have got stamping here and stamping here and I have only used, I actually used three stamps. There is another one which is in the background here. So um, super simple. And then stenciling, I have one design in stenciling and I keep it, keep it super simple and almost every page has got exactly the same stencil and that is the white circle dots. Um, the next bit, words, images and focal point. So words, images and focal point, this is my focal point. This came off a stencil and that's exactly what I wanted it to, to be my focal point. Um, 
Step number five, pen, pencil, and detail. So it's drawing a border around the edge, which doesn't show up on camera, and that's as much as I wanted to do with that. So this is what I'm gonna show you how to do tonight, and I'm gonna talk you through how to do that. Um, what I then did with my pages, I did individual pages, and I used my cinch machine, my cinch binder, to put holes in it and put it all together to finish. So, all right. Drink break. So what we're going to do tonight is I'm going to create three, that's right ladies and gentlemen, three art journal pages. So these are the three loose leaf pages that I'm going to do. And I'm going to do them loose leaf for ease just to, um, so that it keeps flowing and it keeps moving. So. First of all, scrapbookers out there, put your hands up, girls. Um, most of us have got scrapbooking paper that we keep for a rainy day, right? We use those papers over and over and over and over, and for some reason we might have bought five of this paper because we love it, or we bought this paper because we love it, yeah. Um, and then we're not going to use it again, right? So I've got a I've got a stash that I have to crack into, and I pulled these out of the stash. I'm never going to use them; like they don't go with anything anymore. I can't get embellishments. I can't do anything with them. So fair enough. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use them from the bases of my art journal. So this is a paper that is a sassafras lass paper. Um, gorgeous paper. I have cut it down to be about 10 inches across and it has a green on the back. Can anybody tell me the name of this paper? Let's see how many scrapbookers there are out there. Anyone want to hit me with the brand? Type it in the comments. I'll be impressed if you know it. Um, and this is a Studio Calico paper. Uh, I used to subscribe to the Studio Calico kits. Um, quite a busy paper. Don't know why I thought I needed this. Come on, has anyone noticed what this paper is? Waiting for the delay. All right. For those of you, no idea. Okay. It's K and Company. Anybody remember K and Co? Yeah. Me neither. But I used to love K and Co papers. So I've got... Um, fully completed albums to give to Jessica with no photos in them ready to go using K&Co. The whole collection is absolutely gorgeous. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do step number one, paint, ink, background. So it's about using paint on your background or ink on your background or anything you like. So I might use paint on one of them or two of them and I'll use um, a Lindy spray on the other. So give me a sec. I just forgot about the Lindy spray. And I'm just grabbing a couple off the shelf. That could go really bad because I've got no idea if they work um, because they have been sitting there way too long. Okay, so... Let's start with this page here. Um, and what I want to do is I just want to start laying down some colour and I'm creating my background, okay? I'm not doing anything else other than that. Look at that. Didn't even work properly, but stuff it. Let's go with it. So we're laying down the foundation for the, for the base of the page, all right? Now, the other thing here is I'm not using full pump strength. I'm after a bit of a squirty. Oh, that's a very squirty look. All right. So I'm creating a background and then I'm going to throw that behind me. Oh no, I'm not going to put a bit of blue on. Hang on. Because I can. There we go. Okay. So that is done and I can take those and I can put them away. All right, so, whoops. So next, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw that on the floor to dry. Um, 
This is a really easy way of creating lots of pages at once. The next thing I'm going to do, so this is the Sassafras Lass paper and I'm going to put some colour on. So I have just grabbed my paints next to me and I'm just going to commit to whatever colour I put in my hand. Um, I'm going to use my palette knife to, to get that colour and move it around a little bit. Thin it out so it's not going to take 27 minutes to dry. Like that. I'm also taking a small amount of inspiration about what's going on in the background with that pattern paper. Um, I'm not going to put a green on because what happens, it's going to look like crap because it is going to muddy up. So I'm going to stick with colours that, that are going to work together. But, you know, just make it happen just the same. Now, I am kind of keeping with a little bit of a, a small amount of design going on here. The paints that I'm using are a combination of Dilusions paints and the Dina Wakeley paints. They are the only ones that I have got out next to me. I've got like a million paints and they're acrylic paints. They're not going to take forever to dry um, and they're not bad quality. Okay, that works. One more colour. Um, 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 um. Uh, yeah. Stuff it, let's go for it. Now, the other thing is with my catalyst tool, I'm using the back of it to swipe on the colour. I'm not using it. Uh, I'm not using a paintbrush because I don't want that much depth to my page. I'm not creating a masterpiece here. I'm having a play. And I need to balance that. I need to put a little bit of that up here. And I'm not going to put it over the orange because it will go awful. So there's a few of you watching. Heck, look at you guys watching me make a mess. Where's everybody from? Anne-Marie, where are you from? Hey, Catherine. Oh, honey, you missed everything. Catherine, you missed me streaking through the room naked, the whole thing, babes. I am creating, for those of you who have just tuned in, I am introducing you to or reminding you of a process called journaling by fives. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so here is my third art journal page. All right, drink break. Geelong, Perth, excellent. Come on, girls, where are you from? Brisbane, north side. Locked up in Melbourne still. Goodness. New South Wales. Woodcroft, oh yes, Adelaide girl. So, okay, so what I'm doing is now laying down some colour here. Now, I went with Dina Wakeley's Cheddar paint. So, I'm just, again, going to swipe some on and just change the direction of my strokes so I get a different design. Now, Cheddar is a really strong colour. God, you guys are from everywhere. Look at you go. Wow. God, look at me. I didn't think I had that many friends. Crikey. Um, okay, I'll go back and talk in a moment um, and remind you, and I'll, I'll retouch on this journaling by fives thing, okay? So, um, okay, so a bit of cheddar. Um, I, might go, I might give this page a bit of depth. I might want, I might give it a bit more than I normally would. So... I'm also going to pop on some umber, which is this really nice brown. This is a Dina Wakeley paint. Oh, look at that. It's a bit of a hot mess. But you know what? Let's commit to it. 
Oh, I know. Alison, darling, I'm not just popular tonight. I'm popular every night. Oh, well, that, should, that didn't come out right, did it? Oh, just forget that. That's the wine speaking. Sorry, Denise. I'm in, I'm in misbehaving mode this evening. I'm in the um, let's just relax and get into it mode. It's been ages since I've um, done this, so I figured, what the heck, I'll give it a whirl. Um, okay, so this colour that I've got here is called Night. Night is a navy blue. It is a colour that goes with a lot of things. It is one of my most used colours. It is really, really lovely. You'll also notice that I'm going across the whole thing and I'm connecting with all of my edges, okay? So I'm grounding the page. So I'm making sure that it's all connected up. All right, so that is the base of my three pages done. Um, cleaning up as you go, also important. I know, right? And slightly overrated, but since I have got limited space here at the moment um, and a hot mess, I need to actually clean up as I go. All right, so. Okay. So I am genuinely throwing these on the floor next to me. So you'll have to bear with me as I bend over, come back up again, bend over, come back up again. Um, all right, so I have got the bases done. Paint, ink, background. What I'm going to do is quickly heat set these. Dry these babies off. So have you guys all had a good day? Have we done anything exciting today? And this is the one that I'm drying off that um, I did with the Lindy spray. So it's got a little bit of more depth um, with it, with a bit more... Um, a bit more wetness to it, but a, bit, a little bit more damp, we shall say. So when I when I created the album that I did a flick through with earlier, I stood at my desk and I had all of my background papers pre-cut. I then went through and did thirty-five backgrounds done. Then I did. 35 collage recycle materials done then I went through and did 35 lots of stamping and stenciling done and just pumped these babies out so so quickly so I do love the idea of working on old scrapbook paper because Oh, seriously, you're going to have to line my coffin in it, to be honest. Um, I have got paper up to my ears, and I'm sure that you all do as well. We all have paper that we are saving for a rainy day because it was just gorgeous and we loved it when we bought it. I have got so much Webster's paper. Does, everybody, does anybody remember Webster's papers? You know those beautiful flor floral papers that were just so nice? That you couldn't cut them up yep me too I should have pulled one of those pages out okay so the next thing I want to do collage recycle materials so what this means is book paper dress patterns gel press collage sheets um, tissue paper rice paper, those sorts of things. So that is our next step. So what I have done is I have a pile I 
tried I tried to be semi organized and um Glenda alcohol inks are discounted today babe get on it um I tried to be semi organized to try and find some more recycled materials and I've just had an idea so hang on So things like this are the recycled materials. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start creating some design for my page. And I'm going to keep it simple. So you know how we've got these sheets of alphabets, right? <laughs> I know, right? Have a look at them. Aren't they gorgeous? I have got the best nail lady who is extremely tolerant because now the next thing she has to deal with is bright blue alcohol ink in my cuticles. Um, sorry, sidetracked. But the, the whole idea with the collaging paper is to, to use things that you've got and start building up papers, like keep these papers that you've got. These are some, some gel press prints I created a while ago. Um... I've got some gorgeous Tim Holtz papers here that are really, really lovely. What about the paper you've used to use your gel press? Where can I get it from? Okay, um, you can, Elizabeth, if you do a search on my website for deli paper, American deli paper, you can get it from me, babes. Um, $2 for a 10 pack. Go. Okay, so what I want to do, these are my collage papers here. Um, I love my collage collective. Really, really handy because it's got some images in it ready to go. But it's also got these lovely papers that I can tear up and add to my art journals. Um, so if I want something to go into my journal, I can add these. So these are really handy as well. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this first page that I created and I'm going to start adding my collage recycle materials paper. So with this particular page, I'm gonna go for book paper and I'm going to put some strips of book paper in. And I'm going to use gel medium as my adhesive because that is the stuff that dreams are made of no not really um here we go that is the the stuff that is going to work beautifully so gel medium is going to stick everything down really really nice it's an excellent adhesive so this is a, a super old book paper the paper is really thick and coarse oh cheers renee Oh, shit. Hang on. And by the way, I'm not drunk. I've only had three glasses. I know exactly what I'm doing-ish. Um, so, just getting a few little collage elements on. And I know how to laugh at myself, so it's all good. Um, and I'm just going to polish that off so that it doesn't take 117 hours to dry. So... I know I'm covering up a little bit of my background, but I'm also getting it on there and create, creating a little bit of a, de, um, a design. The, as you can see, the ink wasn't totally dry, which is why that's turned pink, which works in my favour. And now I just want to pop a bit of that one down the bottom. Hi, Karen. Nice of you to join us. All right. So that's looking pretty good for that one. I'm just going to pop it aside for a sec. Let that dry. And the next page I'm going to do, let's bring out this one. Let's use 
some of this lovely Tim Holtz stuff that I have had forever and a day and then some. So this is a really good opportunity for you to pull out some of the things in your stash. So you know how you um, don't throw anything out, right? Because you might need it, right? Karen, I'm looking at you. Um, who else am I looking at when I say that? Actually, you know what? Let's be honest. I'm looking at all of you. Um, the the <laughs> um, the the things that you keep that you want to use one day and then you never do. This is where you're going to use them. Those offcuts of bits of paper, and the packs of ephemera that you absolutely love but you just can't part with. That come on, like seriously part with it girls because you're never going to use it um yes that's you debbie so i knew i was talking directly to someone there's always someone in the room who is ready to own it um like i've got my studio here i have all of the things and then i have all of the the other things um, hence my pre-loved section, girls, on the website. Yeah, but it's so pretty. Oh, Kayleen, you've been keeping the wrapping paper from the orders. Are you kidding? Throw that shit in the bin, love. That's clogging up your life. Get rid of that. Get rid of it, girl. Move on, I say. Move on. <sighs> Yeah, good on you, Tina. Get rid of some of that stuff. You don't need to keep it. All right, so I'm I'm sensing a bit of a theme with this one. The, the collage paper that I picked up has um, the butterflies on it. So that's where I'm going with this. Um, and I always get into the habit of doing this polishing technique. Um, you've seen me do it before. Everybody knows why I do it because Tim Holtz told me to, but also because, oops, because it, hello Kirsten, um, because it dries it off quicker and it takes off any excess, okay? And I've decided that that piece needed a bit more shape. So although it's a little bit of a mishmash, it's still got a little bit of design going on, okay? I'm calling that one done. And then this one here, which I kind of look at now and go, yeah, don't love it. <sighs> Let me think this one through. Mm. It's got to mess with my head. All right, so this one I'm going to go for. This is a gel press print that I created a million years ago that I just couldn't part with because it is way too pretty. So this is printed on the American Deli paper that I bring in from the Americas, as we like to call them. And I'm going to put that on my page. Now, this page has got a slightly different design. We're going across. So I am going to whack that on there. And I'm going to follow that idea. Sorry, paintbrush in mouth, cutting. Oh, there we go. Okay, 
So um, I'm working across my page. I've got a little bit of up and down swipey going on there. So I do need to work with, with that a little. Maybe. Nah, I won't. But what I have got are these random alphas from, I don't know, 1970 nothing. And I'm just going to stick them on in no particular way. But I am going to stick them on straight because that just annoys me. I'm never going to use these. I would be lucky to get a word that makes sense out of these. So I think that they are best. See, again, saving them for a rainy day that's just not freaking happening. But I need to get them out of my life. So they can go on this page. Well, Faye, let's be honest. We do save things like this, don't we? And we aren't going to use them. Um, Tina, you donate them to kindies. That is the best thing I have heard all damn week. I usually donate mine to, um, and a lot of my very lovely regular ladies do the same thing. They donate them to me and I pass them on to the Year 7 students at Brighton Primary School. I've been teaching scrapbooking with them for the last, oh, I don't know, um, when did I get sick? That was six years ago. So probably the last five years I have been working with the Year 7s and I they're doing scrapbooking. So they scrapbook their, um, their school year and they are in desperate need of paper and, and alphabets like this because they create pages to give their um, to create an album to give to their parents at their graduation so um, kindergartens and schools will always need your excess bits and pieces there is no reason to keep the stuff at home um, I mean seriously girls what's going to happen when we um, are dead and buried um, we are we're going to leave our craft room to somebody else to tidy up. So a couple of hot tips about that. Use it. Don't save it. And put your friend in your in your will. Mention your friend in your will to come and clean out your craft room. Um, the last thing I want is all of this money that you have spent. What's what's the joke that they say? Don't don't let your husband sell it for what you told him that you paid for it or something along those lines. Um, yeah, the last thing you want to do is have someone sell the stuff off that you, you know, that you paid good money for. So get your girlfriend to come over or put in your, in your will to hear. Yeah. Um, to come and empty your craft room and donate it to the last kinder or to a, to your to your local kindy or whatever it might be. Um, I think that that's really important. I love that idea. Um, I know that I have I mentioned in a couple of people's wills that I will go and empty out their craft room and take it to a kindy rather than letting the husband light a bonfire with it um, or or put it all in a mini skip because that would just break my heart. So have a little bit of a think about if you've got a, a best friend, then, you know, they know how much you love doing this sort of stuff, then ask them to come and clean out your, your craft room for you. Um, it's not unrealistic. It's something, you know, it's a real thing, okay? Um, so I'm just adding a few little bits and pieces, which is making up my collage elements and my um, recycled bits. So... That is, that's kind of heading towards the right spot. Wash your brush with your gel medium in it because if that dries, it's going to be gross. 
Oh, thanks, Tina. Um, <laughs> your kids are going to burn it all, are they, you reckon, Tina? All right. Okay, cleanish paintbrush. Um, for the time being, um, I can pop these bits aside. I don't need to use them again. I'm only creating the three pages tonight, so I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to... Oh, if I throw them on the floor, then I have to pick them up tomorrow because Jess is not here, Louise is not here, and Trevor's helping me tomorrow, and he's not cleaning it up, is he? So let me just... Make a nice, neat pile somewhere. All right. What's going to be my next step? Let's have a bit of a look. Drink wine. I'll cut that bit off the bottom there. This page, because it's got... The wet element on it is still a little bit soggy, so I do need to hit this one with the heat gun again. So just chat amongst yourselves. Okay, so our next bit... Oh. My next bit in the journaling by fives. So we've done the paint ink background bit. Then we have just only added our collage recycled materials. The next thing we're going to do is add our stamps and stencils. This is the bit where you can get way lost. Um, you could spend hours and hours and hours on this bit. My trick is... To not give myself too much choice. If I have too much choice, I overthink the shit out of it. Nobody wants that. So, stamps and stencils. Keep it simple. What that means for me, what I have got out here in, next to me on the floor... I grabbed one... There's, I think, five stencils. And I grabbed one, two, three. Had that one handy. And you know what? That's it. So I've just grabbed a few stamps. I'm not going to overthink it. What am I going to do first? Stamps or stencils? Um, I don't know. Let's go with stenciling first, okay? So stenciling I want to do in white. That much I do know. Um, where is my white paint? Uh, that much I don't know. I don't have any white paint handy, but I have gesso. And I have a blending tool. That'll do. So where and what do we do with the stenciling? So the stenciling that I've got, oh, look, their words and their words. So I need to choose one or the other. Let's get rid of that one. Um, this stencil is just squares. Perfect. It doesn't have a particular design so it's going to go on every page that I want it to. Um, this stencil that I got out is the Scribble Scratch stencil. Um, this one is one of my top stencils but I've already chosen words and these words are straight script. Do I need curly words? No. So let's get rid of that one. Throw that one back on the floor. Um, and then I have got two here, two other ones here. This one, it's a bit, I don't love that all of the, it's a bit, I don't know. It, I, I, 
I love this stencil and it has its place, but I don't know that it has its place in my art journal today. I love this stencil. This one I think is called Hamilton or something along those lines. It's a stencil girl one. So this is another one that I'll, I'll keep handy. So therefore, I have got three stencils only to choose from. Radio, let's do this. Let's commit to it, girls. Because I can't use my white, I can't find my white paint, I'm using gesso. Give it a generous squeeze, apparently. Drink break. Oh, I wonder if Trevor's watching this so he can come and fill up my glass. What are the chances? Hey, Kirsten, are you watching? Can you send Trevor a message that I need a drink refill, please? I just put gesso all over the other side of my face. <laughs> all right. So, stenciling. What I want to do, I've still got a little bit of a design going on here. So, I want to be adding, let's go with this one. I'm going to be adding some colour. So when I'm using my um, blending tool, I'm not going to just dip it in there and go straight on there because that's going to make this way too wet. So I'm putting it on here and I'm pulling it out so that it's not so wet. And then <laughs> I'm going to just dab that on like that. Now, when I look at that and go, well, you know, Natalie, let's commit to it here and it's a lot. I can now just rub my finger over it or since I have shares in baby wipes at the moment we're going to go with that baby wipe it out and the good thing about the white stenciling is it tones everything down as well if you look at it and go wow what the heck was I thinking that's okay that's what we can do here So for those of you who have just joined in, you are not watching a train wreck. You are watching me do something called Journaling by Fives, which is creating art journal pages um, in a bit of a in a bit of a pattern to make it nice and quick. So there's a bit of a, a theme, you've just got to go with me on this one and and watch what I am doing. So alright. Now, is anybody here on Facebook in the in the Bookface land friends with Fiona Paltridge? Fiona was going to join in on my live Facebook tonight. We chatted about it last Saturday night over a beverage or two, and I forgot to remind her that I was doing it. And she was going to jump on in or come and watch anyway. I don't know how to get her to join in on Facebook, so... Um. So you can see what's happening here. I'm adding these, these pops of awesome around my page. And they are me. Ha. Send her a message, Tina, and say, Natalie's live on her business page. Pop over and say hi. She's an awesome creative genius, that girl. All right, so there we go. So I've added a few little spots around the page. Of color and it's kind of now diverting away from everything else as well so I'm gonna put that aside to dry and that stencil gone as well for the moment rightio so with this page here I'm gonna go all in with this guy so exactly the same thing I'm gonna get some of this around my page and again, it's going to be in white. So these are the gorgeous Stencil Girl stencils. Everybody knows how much I love Stencil Girl. Um, I've been designing with them for quite a, of quite a few years now. Um, and I love that Stencil Girl is designed by creative people, for creative people. You know, there's actually a little bit of a thought process in mind rather than just some random design that is pulled off of, I don't know, a, a stock image somewhere. So um, I really love that. So I'm just getting it in and around the areas where I have added my 
um, my collage paper, okay? And there's no reason why you can't get your fingers in there, people. Oh, good on you, Tina. She's probably out tonight. She's probably sick of me. She's had me for like four weekends in a row. All right, so there we go. We've got now some stenciling around our page. The stenciling has gone in and around the areas where the book paper is. So there's a little bit of a design still going on here. Um, it might look a little haphazard, but I'm kind of hoping it's all going to come together really nicely. So I'm going to pop that one aside as well. Now, this one here, I've run out of paint. Gesso, gesso, gesso. Might not be an early to, early start tomorrow. Might be a little slower on the uptake, I'm thinking. So when I'm adding, adding the stenciling, stenciling, don't forget, I'm not mixing my, my colours at all. I'm just sticking with white stenciling. I'm keeping it super consistent. So now, because I've got a bit of a design that I started just by going across the page, my stenciling is going to stay with that. Okay. So this is the building stencil. You can see how well used this is in my stash. And you can use a baby wipe as well. If you put it on there and you think, yeah, nah, or you want to tone it back a bit, it also takes the paint to the edge of the stencil, which creates these lovely little ridges see can you see the ridges the white these little bits here that is what a baby wipe could do all right now this big hit bit here isn't so like full-on and in your face all righty so now we're getting there i'll get a bit over here There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. <laughs> uh, girls, I think that, uh, yeah, my husband would probably disagree with you. He gets pretty sick of me pretty quickly. And so does Jessica, to be honest. No. Look, girls, if you can't make yourself laugh, you can't make someone else laugh, really. Have you tried today? I, I just think that life's too short to take myself seriously. Everybody knows what my, my story is. Everyone knows that I have spent a bit of time laughing at myself and laughing with you guys and, and being very, very human. I do, I do take the piss out of myself a bit, but I do, do love what I do now. And that has come from, from being... Um, being around some really cool people, but also having a um, a little bit of a, a brush with reality when I got sick. So that's the other reason I don't take life so seriously, because it might be gone tomorrow. So I'm all about just getting, getting shit done and, um, and enjoying life. Like, seriously, it's fun. This is craft, people. It's a hobby. It is not um, the be-all to end-all. It is not going to define your life unless you do this for a living. But this is this is a hobby industry, so it's, you're just supposed to have fun with it, right? Anyway, soapbox, woof it, done it. All right, so a little bit of stenciling there, and we're all starting to come together. So let's wipe that up before I stick my top. <laughs> um Stick my, stick my hand in it and there's my sponge for later. So let's have a look at what we have got. All right, I should have written this on a smaller piece of paper rather than getting my journal out every time. So we have now done our paint inky background. 
we have added some collage or some recycled materials. So this could be, like I said, book paper or collage paper or um, serviettes or tissue paper or anything, anything to help build your background. Then I have added the stencils. The next thing I'm gonna do is add the stamps. So what stamps am I going to use? Um, I have all the stamps and I do love Dina Wakeley stamps for backgrounds. Um, but what I've got here is some really simple designs. I've got an alphabet. I've got this little Tim Holtz number. I've got the one that I designed for Paper Rose. And I have got my Won't Let You Down stamp. So this just does a alphabet script sort of thing. A um, bit of a tip with this one as well. And I've tried to do it before. Oh, and I need a Sharpie, not a... Um, paint pen but you need to write that this is the top so this is all I'm going to use and I've just got a super simple theme here because I'm not about building images I'm about building um, backgrounds right so you're going to need black archival ink uh, like I said before and I've said today earlier you need to use black archival ink because if you don't exactly know what you're going to do next then black archival ink is going to save the day for you because you'll be able to do anything over the top of it and it's not going to affect the integrity of your image the bonus dog hair as well which you can't see on camera which is probably good um the bonus of having two little bulldogs all right so what I want to do now is I want to add my stamping. And you can use anything. So it's not necessarily going to be about the main image. It's just going to be building a background. So you can see that I'm following where my stenciling went. And this is the page that... I have uh, the background that I have created with um, the Lindy sprays. And, yeah, no, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. And I don't know if you can see that it's got a hell of a shimmer to it as well because that's what those Slindy sprays can do. All right, so that's looking okay. So I have followed the line that runs down there. Um, and, you know, just for the heck of it, I'm going to... Actually, no, not that one. That one. that on there and I'm not stamping it smack bang in the middle everything is connected to an edge for a reason it just can't be floating it's got to be connected okay so the stamping I just did then is this here which is this building building this um, this corner up so I'm starting to create a little bit more of a design around my page, okay? Looking good. Next, 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 and next. Okay, page number two. What's going, oh, excuse me, what's going on here? What's going on here is I've got words, I've got words, and I've got spots. Um, and I've got butterflies and music notes. So I really do need to kind of keep with words. So I've got my Won't Let You Down stamp. And I'm going to start building my edge. And I'm layering on top of each other for the depth that it needs. A very underrated stamp, this one, I have to say. 
This was the main reason, this stamp was the main reason that I wanted to design my own stamps and stencils. This is what, what, um, what inspired me from the get-go, is I could not get more of my absolute favourite stamp that I used to use to death. And everyone used to say to me, oh, Natalie, where'd you get that stamp? Do you stock that? And the stamp that I had at the time was a unity stamp and they discontinued it. So I couldn't get it. So I kept using something that everybody wanted and it bugged me to no end. So I went, yeah, stuff it. And the powers that be came to me and they know who they are and I'm very, very, very grateful for that. Um, but I then went and this was the very, very first thing. If anything, I just wanted a beautiful typewriter font stamp. I wanted to do that. So you can see I've got a, a building a bit of an area here and I'm building an area in and around here. I'm thinking I need to go up there, but not so much, just a little, just enough. Just building a little bit of colour up there. So this one comes in a, um, comes as a single stamp as well, which is really, really good. And it is actually the words to my favourite song that I have amended due to copyright, of course. And um, that is why it is called Won't Let You Down. All right, drink break. All right. The last page. So when I'm gonna add stamping to this one, I'm gonna stamp over these bits and I'm going to use the numbers and I'm going to use the numbers. So the cool thing about this is, is I'm not giving myself too much, um, too much choice. Um, I'm limiting myself. When I created the 35 pages that I did for my, um, my journal that I showed earlier, I only had, I had a bucket in front of me, just a little, you know, placky container. And it had, um, I don't know, maybe eight stamps in it in total. And they all had very, very simple designs in them, like spots and grids and, and nondescript images that would work across the board. So that is what was important. So that's using the Tim Holtz... Um, one of the number stamps of his, which you will find available online at nataliemayscrapbooking.com.au. But that's not what I'm here for tonight because I knocked off work. I just want to make something really pretty today. And really different. And I just want to share the love around. That's all. All right. So this one is a paper rose stamp, another one that I designed at the beginning of last year, year before, whenever that was. Um, and again, something that I felt was missing in the business at the time. And not using acrylic block because I don't want it to be a perfectly straight image. I want it to be an imperfect image because it's about building a background. All right. Hi, Kerry ann Nice of you to join us. Where have you been, darling? We've missed you. <laughs> have you been drinking, Tina? Come on, nobody ever says I appreciate all you do unless they've been drinking or they want something. Let's be honest. I know you don't. All right. Plain spot. So, let's go back and have a look. <laughs> eating birthday cake of course darling of course you did have a birthday you do have a birthday all right we have just completed step number three which is stamps and stencils 
So we have started to build a bit of a design. <laughs> yes, I know Fiona's still missing, isn't she? So I've created a stamp. I'm building in and around here. And how I've done exactly the same thing here. So that really scary cheddar that I started with in the background, it's kind of working now. I don't mind that at all. I think I kind of like it. And I like the pops of green that I didn't realise that I had created. Um, same as this one here. I've got these this orange here that is, is coming out in the spots that I, I guess I subconsciously created. And this hot pink. And the whole lot kind of works in together. And whereas this one, I've got this white background, so I could have quite easily gone with any colour in the background, um, but I'm building up those beautiful layers. So our next step is going to be the hardest one of them all, words, images, and focal point. So what we need to do now is create our focal point. So... Our focal point can be anything. So when we look through my when we look through my original journal that I, I talked about before, our focal point is an area where our our title is going to be, perhaps, or um, a key image, for example. Um, let's see what else I've got here. Where's a focal point? All right. I've got a whole heap of ampersands. This one is the focal point because it is the chipboard that sits up a little bit higher, whereas I built it up to, to, to that, I guess. Um, the This page here, don't allow your fear to hold you back. My focal point is here. And my words that go along with it are here. Okay? My focal point on this page is here. And here's all my collage elements down the side. Okay? My focal point, bam, here. So you, your art journal pages all have a focal point. So they could be... A stamped Dina Wakeley image on tissue paper or collage paper. They could be a, a button. Um, everybody's got a, a stash of these. Um, I'm sure everybody's got a stash of flare buttons. I know I seem to have an abundance of them. Um, here is an image that I pulled from a magazine. This is my focal point, which leads down with the long shoulder down to the words. See how that all directs down to there. Okay, so that is how that flows down into that page. Um, so there's my focal point followed by my phrase. God, that actually makes sense when you say it out loud. Um, my page, so these are foam stamps down across here. Here is my focal point. So focal point is about finding your right image. Um, this is where I might come a little bit unstuck, okay? I have got this. I've got a box of stuff. I have a bag of, I don't know, this is six months worth of ephemera. Because you all know what I'm talking about, don't you? This is six months worth of die cuts and things that I just kind of can't part with because I might need it one day and, you know, it's got... Maybe it's a bit more than six months. That's a Kaiser craft, I'm sure. Kaiser? Prima. I don't know. But it's been there forever. So there's all of these little images I've got. Um, these are fantastic for focal points. Uh, I think that they are ideal and these are also ideal for focal points. These are the Scrap Effects Peoples. So I might use one of those. You know what? I'm not going to go searching. I'm going to use what is in front of me. So, and Natalie, 
Let's just start with page number one. Let's start with here. So I need to create a focal point. Um, that's nice. It kind of works, but it does actually get a bit lost. I don't think that that is my smartest choice to go on there. Uh, does it go on here? Oh, actually, that it stands out better on this page because it's white on a darker one. So I might put that on that page. I like this, but I don't love this. What? Oh, I love this. I don't love this for this page, but I like this. Um, but her body language is a bit negative. She really needs to be on that way, that side, because she's facing that way. So I need to find something that fits better. Ooh, look at you. I know, here we go. So these are the scrap effects. Uh, Dream women, I think they're called. She's kind of cute. I had some more here. What else should I have? So all of those magazines that you've kept for a rainy day and you want to use, this is the time to drag those babies out. And all of these little die-cutting ephemera bits. You know what? I am going to stick that there. Stuff it. I'm going to stick it right in the middle. So that's that one. This one, what are we going to use? Uh, let's, sorry guys, I have to do this. I've got to pull out some of this stash. I'm going to regret it, but I need to have a little bit of a think about what's going to go on this page. Because this page is a little bit more, um, it's got a little bit more to it in the sense that it's a bit more bolder in the colours. Um, it's got a bit more... Yeah, depth to it. So let's have a look and see what we've got. Roller skates. I bought those back from New Zealand after the cruise last year. I'm sure I'm not the only person that has this, right? Look at the puppy dog. Fiona, poultry is uh, Fiona, where are you? Mermaids. It's not a mermaid page. Who am I kidding? Um, okay, so here we, here I am doing the overthinking thing. Let's just find something that I can use as my focal point and none of this is working. What did you say? That cream and black butterfly. Oh, see, it's gone now. There's that seven second delay freaking kicking in. Where? What butterfly are you talking about? Ooh. Maybe. Surely, oh no, that's a dragon. Okay, hang on. The bird cage is near yeah, now. Nah. It's at the top. Oh, that one. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Okay, good thinking. All right. Now, what am I going to do with that? Hang on. Here's me thinking stuff through beautifully. I have to put it back in the bag, girls. Oh, hang on. Maybe. Put the pile down, yes. I know. And here's the thing, right? You get so caught up and then all of a sudden you've got all of the things in front of you that you're looking at and you end up with too much choice. So that's where it's important to not put too many stamps and stencils in front of you and be a little bit disciplined in in using um, what you have in front of you. Just not not stepping outside of your your zone, um, and I, and that's that's really important. Otherwise, it ends up being a hot shit mess of you know whatever. All right. You know what? If I just go, oh, push aside, they're still going to be there tomorrow, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put them back in the bag. Fries before guys. There you go. 
Okay. A5. Two. All right. So I opened a drawer, and I don't know that that was such a great idea. Um, all right. Carrie Ann, it's a freaking nightmare today, I can tell you. So, what I pulled out from just the drawer next to me is basic go <laughs> hashtag hoarder. Basic, basic grey trims from, I don't know, I think I've had these since freaking 2000. Look at that. They came out in 2009. There's actually a date on it. Um, that's a little embarrassing. But I love these and I cannot throw them out. And I pulled out some words. So let's start from the beginning. And go back to these ones. Oh, Jessica's off with her boyfriend tonight. She's, um, yeah, not here. Yeah, I can't throw that. I'm sure I'm not the only person who has kept these. And I still have basic grey alphas. And do you want a blast from the past, Michelle? Making memories rub-ons. In fact, you know what? I've pulled them out, so let's bloody well use them. These are... Oh, here she is. Nice of you to show up. Where have you been, love? Um, these, This set here, um, I, I love this so very much. If anyone has these at home and they want to gift them to me, I will be forever grateful. This is my favourite ever. <gasps> Robin! Really? Um, these are my favourite ever. Um, I have kept them for such a long time. <gasps> Chris has got them too. Oh. And then this font I used to love, whereas now I'm like, yeah, nah, but I'm going to use them anyway. It looks like my handwriting. I think that's the problem. So these are rub-ons. So I'm going to whack some of these on. But, okay, basic grey from 2009. <laughs> yeah, look, I think we have all got some of that stuff around. Oh, cheers, Fiona. Fiona, I can't even speak. All right, so this is going to be my focal point. Back to what I need to be doing. Oh, doodle bug alphas. I still sell doodle bug alphas, Nikki. You can buy them and I keep ordering them. I'm the only one that likes them. That might be the problem at hand. But basic grey, sorry, doodlebug alphas and um, what's the other ones I've got? Um, Queen and Co. I've still got Queen and Co. for goodness sakes. Like seriously. Okay, focal point. Focus, Natalie. We're creating our focal point. Um, oh, Sassfrus Lass. That's what this paper is. Hang on. In fact, here you go. This is this paper here that I use because I'm creating these pages. I know, right? Um, these pages are on scrapbook paper, right? Because we're doing the journaling by fives. So this paper that I used is Sassfrus Lass. I don't even know if that's how you say it, but that's how I say it. Um, bungle dots. So, you know what? Let's use this on the page just because and let's go with that there we need to anchor Michelle's lovely thing here and I don't want to cut her up cover up my butterflies 
And I'm just going to go with the glue because I've cleaned my gel medium brush. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's let's stick these down too. <laughs> yeah, Michelle, so you still have them and you don't scrapbook, right? Can we talk about why you still have them? Hashtag hoarder. I know, me too. Actually, I'll stick those on after. Yeah, so why are you using them? You create an art journal like this. So you can still see them. They're just going to be there but in the background. So can you use those papers up, girls. I don't want to have to come to your funeral and freaking use gel medium on your coffin with your favourite papers, for goodness sakes. Nobody wants that. Or maybe they do. Okay, so... I'm going to stick this guy on here because this was the barcode strip off of the paper. So repurpose, reuse. Yeah, I'm going to, um, Renee, I'm going to put up a photo of it. So for those of you who have just joined, because there's people coming and going um, with this live Facebook. Number one, um, I'm just playing. I am... I'm introducing you to or reminding you of the journaling by fives, which is a technique that I bugger, hang on, that I uh, came across <laughs> uh, um, that I came across. I came across this technique of journaling by fives. I don't know how many years ago, like a while ago through Shannon Green and then the amazing Adele Toomey used it on her YouTube channel on Inky Quill and it's awesome for using up your shit sorry your valuable craft supplies so it's incredibly awesome to to work with and I was saying before this little journal that I keep flicking through I created in a day and did 35 pages in a day because you just pump them out using this recipe. So I've been following simple technique to do this. Um, okay, so I'm still here committing to this. Um, so I'm just creating some nice little layers here. And I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to use the word uh, glue. Let's put that. Okay, so this glue is um, called puzzle glue. It's available on my website for eight bucks or so a tube and it is the bee's knees. It is so damn good that I bring it in from Poland, okay? So it is the my favourite glue to use. The incredibly old, incredibly talented Olga um, introduced it to me and I love it. So the puzzle glue is great because it has a fine tip. I haven't had one clog up on me yet and it... It rocks my world. Um, simple as that. You know, it's just a really nice, nice uh, glue to use. So it is a higher priced glue, but it, like I said, because I bring it in from Poland, it works really quite nicely, um, and I do really like it. So um, okay, I'm just going to cut some random letters to put around. I was going to create a word, and then I just couldn't think of one. That made sense so I'm just going to cut a few letters and put them around my page using my making memories rub-ons um, yeah the puzzle group glue is, is wonderful to use I do really really like it um, okay so that one can go there and normally I would use something that's actually no I would always use my fingernails Rub ons. You know the other thing that I've got in my stash? Raise your hands, girls. Mayer Road rub ons. Mayer Road chipboard tags. Mayer Road everything. Okay, so um, Michelle Logan, I know you've got Mayer Road. Surely you've got Mayer Road. I cannot be alone. Um, Mayor Road was just gorgeous. I'm going to, because I'm not trying to create a word, I'm going to put my letters sideways and I don't want to inadvertently 
Yeah, because they do still work. And May Road ones work better, actually. They always went on like butter. But the cool thing here is if you overlap them and put them upside down and sideways, they come, they just become like scribbly little elements on your page. They're nothing in particular. And I think that's cool. Yeah, like Maya Road stuff just rocked. I did um, classes with Maya Road at the very, very first scrapbook paper craft expo that I went to. I did a class with oh, Caroline, her name was, from Maya Road. I also did a class at that expo. Actually, Michelle, you're as old as me. We were probably both at that expo. You were probably teaching at that expo. You're such a freaking queen. Um, who else was teaching at that expo? Oh, um, Gail from Making Memories. She was like the queen of Making Memories at the time. I um, did a class with her. Okay, so, okay, position-wise, what am I doing? I'm building around this edge here, okay, and around this edge here. So that's why I'm thinking here. Um, so I reckon it might have been 2008 that I went to my first paper craft scrapbook expo at the Brisbane Convention Centre. And my amazing sister, I showed her an advert in the magazine and went, oh, this is what I want to do. I want to go to this expo. And she went, well, why don't you just go? I went, well, I don't know, I've got a family and a kid and a... She went, well, stiff shit, just go. So I did. So I jumped on a plane by myself and I went to Queensland and I stayed in a hotel. I stayed at the Mater Hospital Hotel and I used to walk through South Bank every day down to the expo and I did classes with all of, like, the super, super famous people back then. Um... Lynette Carroll was just like the queen of the queen of everything. Um, I've still got her project uh, up on my shelf, on my shelf of honour, as I call it. Um, all of the projects I created. And who? Rusty Pickle. Rusty Pickle, um, I did a class with them. So can anybody here tell me where the brand Rusty Pickle, why? I remember the name, but I don't remember the the roots behind it, the history behind it. I think they were Australian. Does anybody remember? Michelle, surely. You're as old as me, babe. I mean, we're still hot and everything, but we're still, still old, let's be honest. I am today after boxing this morning, but okay. All right, so I've added a few little rub-ons. Rusty Pickle was Australian. I'm sure it's an Australian brand. Rusty Pickle was my favourite with seven gypsies. Oh, my God, yes. So that is why I totally fangirled when I taught alongside um, Paula Cheney in, um, in Brisbane. And in New Zealand. I've taught alongside Paula twice. She's a freaking queen. Okay. Yes. Yes. Seven Gypsies. I still love Seven Gypsies. Oh, I need more wine. Trevor, can you read my mind, babe? Okay, so what else I need to do? I need to I need to put some wording along here and a bit of scribble, a bit of loopy scribble. And it needs a frame, but that's going to come in the next step. So that is my focal point and what I want to create for this page. Moving on, or I'm going to be here till flame and midnight. Because I'm talking about old stuff, like an old person. Okay, let's do her. Um, okay, so... Where's Trevor? Trevor's sitting on the lounge watching the football, I'm assuming. Um, ooh... Um, I did some foiling. Oh, Hazel, it's midnight in New Zealand. What are you still doing up, babe? I need something else here. So just chat amongst yourself for a minute while I um, have a bit of a look. Um, Michelle, do you still use the seven gypsies that you've got? That's the question, doll. Yeah, 
your challenge, if you choose to accept it, I want to see some seven gypsies on your next project. All right, surely I can do something with all of this, right? Okay. Yeah, I still have a stash of the Seven Gypsies papers. Um, and I still have a stash of... Actually, I don't know that I have as many tapes. You know, here's the funny thing. The stuff that I just pulled out of my drawer... But why do I have so many of these? <laughs> Party spot. Um, Glimmer Mist, is it still around? I know, actually. Um, the reason why this stuff is still at the top of my drawer. Yes, thank you, Michelle. I look forward to that. So this is one of, uh, this has been around forever. This has come out of my stash. You know what? Because I used to work in a scrapbook store, these used to come on a roll. Look at that, at 70 cents each. They've still got the price on the on the back of it. So I'm going to stick one of these on here. Heidi, I'm sure you would be proud to see me use this. Oh, is it still sticky? Oh, it is. Bugger me. And you know what I love the most about that sticker? It's a matte sticker. It's not shiny. I hate shiny things. Um, so that can go there, that can go there, and you know what, I'm going to go hard or go home, I'm going to stick that baby on. Holy cow, what's that for, Fiona, the fact that I've actually pulled that baby out of the woodwork, or what? Oh god, it's 9.30, I've been doing this for an hour and a half. Okay, let's speed this up a bit, are you going to be here till freaking midnight? Okay. Let's whack that baby down there like it's 1972. Let's stick that on and vintage, a vintage Heidi Swap baby. I know. It's because I'm feeling vintage today. Let's get these girls on here, these gorgeous little dream girls. So I'm building my... Building my background, I am working my focal point, I am at working on this whole thing here. So there we go, I know. But you know what, I don't have a whole lot of shit in my stash, but I've got the good stuff. There's certain stuff I just can't part with, right? And... That is it. We are memory keepers. Yeah, used to love. We are memory keepers as well. Um, look at this guy here. $11.50. Making memories. Spiral journaling book. Very entertaining, Anne-Marie. I know I can be like that and I apologise, darling. Um, sorry, not sorry, as we like to say in our house. These used to be my favourite things. In fact, I should pull out some of the art journal pages, sorry, the scrapbook pages where I've used these. Um, my favourite things to use on scrapbook pages. Um, okay, I'm going to stick this on. I pulled out, oh, a purple heart. No, I don't want that. 
Um, yeah, um, Michelle, you say you don't need to de-stash. You've only got the good shit left. I'm exactly the same. I've just got the good... I might have a lot of stuff when I sit down and actually look at it, but I don't have a whole lot of stuff that I just don't use. I've got a lot of good stuff that I just can't part with, but I still use it all. So although I've been saving these Making Memories Alphas since, I don't know, what feels like 1982, um, I do still use them. Um, in fact, I used them on, there's a Stencil Girl project that, that goes, that's about to go, um, I don't know, Stencil Girl or, or maybe even Lindy's, but uh, a video that I've put up where I've used them recently so I still do pull all them out and I have no no fear of of not you know that, that they're going to get wasted because we do get that mentality of oh I can't use that I might waste it oh for god's sake people goodness me just bloody well use it I'm gonna stick that there um so I am I am all or nothing when it comes to it. So I know Fiona, you just had a massive D stash of your stuff as well. I reckon it would be quite cleansing. And you can all see what's in my um, pre-loved items on, on Facebook at the moment. There's so much stuff in there that um, is, is pre-loved and, um, you know, just, just excess stuff that just don't need anymore. So it's all about, you know, dig, I'm not a declutterer, but I know that there's a lot of stuff that can clog up your life without you even realising it. So, um, yeah, get rid of it if you're not going to use it. That's my thoughts. Right, I'm building a focal point. What would have been really awesome is um, if I had got off my bum and got an acetate butterfly, one of the scrap effects ones, and then I could... Oh, I could have used alcohol ink to colour it. And there we go. That works there. That works there. Bit of random corrugated stuff here. Now I'm going to pull some of these alphas and part with because, you know, I can. And then the very last step is going to be the doodling and... Um, you know, popping a title and some words on. So, um, what I might do is, and these need to slip into the background. So I don't want them to be the main image, but I want them to stand out. So, oh, look at that. Bloody perfect. Why don't they make stuff like this anymore, I ask? Well, that's disappointing. And I'm not going to put them all in one place. I'm going to spread these guys around a little. A Q for Quinn, which is my maiden name. Bet you didn't know that. There we go. Rightio, there's something you didn't know yesterday. Dun, dun, dun. A couple of little random letters. Okay. So, that page is way unfinished. So, that page is going to cop a lot of extra doodling. Maybe a bit more black stenciling over the top. So, back to our... Our journaling by fives. Autumn leaves rub-ons were the best. Oh, my God. And they were in full colour too, weren't they, Michelle? Sorry, guys, sidetracked by... Okay, Michelle, you're distracting me. Journaling by fives. Paint, ink, background. Tick. Done. Collage, recycled materials. Tick. Done. Stamps and stencils. Stamping in black. Stenciling in white. Tick. Done. Words, images and focal points. So I created a focal point, but I really didn't put any words on. So I might just... Add some words now. So words could be just about anything. They can be a stash. 
<laughs> I know, Michelle. How easy is it to get carried away by all the things that you forgot you had, right? Um, so your words can be, a, you can create a, a sentence, um, a phrase, a, um, a, a poem. You could go through Pinterest and find a quote. Um, you could pull out your stickers, which is what I'm going to do. Um, and oh, you can create, oh, uh, look, that corrugated tape that you saw, Patricia, I have had since, look, let's just say it's not even sticky anymore. Okay. It's not even tape, babe. Um, this stuff is, I don't even know the brand. It has no brand. Um, sorry. It's been around forever and ever. Um, we are using up our stash tonight. We are not, uh, I'm not promoting any new products. I am being a little lazy. I'm showing you how to use some of those valuable craft supplies that you have at home. All right. Let's go with this. So I have got here to be continued. So let's whack that. And I say whack, oh, look at that. That's so old that it has stuck, the sticky has stuck to the paper. It's like epic sticky. Hang on. Oh, there we go. Let's put that over her gut. Sorry, tummy, her tummy, her midsection. Oh. So I quite often jump onto Pinterest and find myself a little quote and I will write that on. Or I will find a um, something like, you know, these, these thickers which I have had since, like I said, 1982. Um, and... I will add them to my page because, you know, you know how we, again, you know, rainy day. Guys, it's not raining here. Use the damn thickers. Um, oh, these are, these are taking a bit of, um, a bit of oomph to get off because they are really old, okay. I've got Heidi Swap alphabets. Who's got Heidi Swap Alphas? The stickers squeak too. Can you hear them squeaking? And that means you can hear me swearing. So I apologise, Renee, for the human falling out in me. Oh, gosh. It's so difficult to get off. Maybe use them within, you know, a short amount of time. Okay, there we go. You ready? And we're going to pop that. You know what? This page is going to look great, I've decided, with some doodling on it and some black pen work in a minute. Oh, Heidi Alphas were my fave at the time. Um, I actually bought a heap of Heidi Alphas, I remember, and that none of them were sticky. I bought an absolute truckload of them and none of them were sticky and I was so peeved about it that I wrote a letter or an yeah, no, it would have been a, a, a letter um, or an email or something like that to um, to Ranger and they replaced all of them for me. So I still have like 11 packets of them. Um, just two secs. And I'm an avid collector of white alphas. The reason I'm an avid collector of white alphas is because you can make them any colour you like. So these are the Studio Calico ones that you can paint that I have had forever. So I'm going to create a quick little word here that says 
um, a sentence or something that says, I don't know, something witty. I don't know. What should I write? Um, the human falling out in me. Actually, that's about right. Um, um, okay, here we go. Here we go. Let's just go with... So these um, these were Studio Calico Alphas and they've got fabric on them so that you can colour them any colour you like. Um, vintage, not old. I shouldn't use old. I should use a vintage. Vintage is a much retro, retro, babe. But we should definitely, I should do up a poll, run a competition for something for the oldest item in your stash. What do you reckon? I would love to see what people have got stashed in there. Um, I don't even think that's sticky. Uh, not anymore. What do you reckon? Should I do a... I'll run that tomorrow. Do a competition of the the, uh, the oldest crafts. And it can be a partial... It can be like a partial pack of thickers or something like that. Something that you just can't pass. You just can't throw out those that last little bits. I know, but wouldn't it be interesting, Debbie, that it would take some serious hunting, she's saying. And I'm thinking, you know what? It would take some serious hunting. But I reckon that we have all got somewhere something that is epically old. But the funny thing about it is it all evokes a memory in all of us, doesn't it? Okay. Oh, thank you. I'm thinking, what the hell are you writing? What are you writing? What did you write there? I know. Okay, so I've had like three glasses of wine. But good save, Gills. Oh, for God's sake. Bloody hell. Good thing I didn't use glue to stick them down and I was just relying on them being some sort of sticky. Oh, there we go. Now we have a word that looks real. Okay, use it or lose it because we have been talking about it. Okay, so we're on the right track with that page and I just need to stick a word on this one. This one already says on here, no one by me. No one but me in um, Michelle's lovely handwriting. But let's add on, what have I got here beside me? Absolutely nothing. Oh, look, Carrie ann good on you. I'm, I used to be a bit of a stickler for English, but I just got lazy. All right, I'm coming, girls. And I just found that. Okay, so. Oh, and my glue's dying of slow death here. Okay, so there's a lot going on in my life and in this conversation this evening that is completely and totally super random. So let's go with that. So these are excess... Uh, from Coco Vanilla, I think. Yeah, they're Coco Vanilla. Coco Vanilla. Uh, from their ephemera pack and love those. So I'm just going to put the lid back on that glue before that goes really awful. Okay, done. Okay, next step. So we're using the... Um, God, this is a mess. We're using the... Oh, 
journaling by five. So the next thing we need to do is finish off with... Oh, pen, pencil, detail. So your pen, pencil, detail is you find your favourite black pen. So it can be a Pintor paint pen, it can be your food ball pen, it can be a super fine, it can be your drawing pen, it could be all of them, it can be your Stabilo pencil if that floats your boat. Um... Let's go with this one tonight, shall we? So I love doing a frame around things. It, it just kind of finishes a page off for me. I like that finished look. And it creates that frame. Squeaky pen. And everyone knows how much I love a doodle, right? So I am a loopy doodler. Read into that how you will, ladies. But I will normally doodle and draw in and around um, where I already have built up. So in and around here where I've got these rub-ons. I will work in here and up in here. And it's I'm not writing anything. Um, what does Dina Wakeley call them? A Semitic mark? A, 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 I don't know. Super random. And what did you say before? Totally awesome. Done. And I'm pretty happy with that. And I will quite often go over images like this and in and around it just to add my own marks to it. So then, then it looks like I've made it myself. And that's kind of the whole idea of the art journaling. I know full well, and you all know full well, that Michelle has created this image as part of the Scrap Effects collection. And I love that. So it's added, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's got a starting point for me and it's enabled me to then build on it. So it could be as simple as, you know, building a little bit of a hair or a speech bubble coming out the side that says something. Um, it could be anything. So you can write words in and around it. You can build on those things. But... That's what I quite love about these sorts of images. Um, a little bit more doodling in and around this side where my stamping and my butterfly is. And they're just loose, loose hand marks. I do need to work on this super random bit and I'm thinking that needs a little bit of love. But I've just done some marks in and around my page. Keeping it simple. Um, let's go to this page. So the to be continued definitely needs a border. Um, I'm pretty sure that the camera is not showing up how shimmery and pretty this is. But this is the page that I've created with the Lindy's sprays in the background. Let's get rid of the heart here. So um, one question that you're probably wondering or you'll probably get away from here and ask and go, what the hell is she going to do with all of this stuff? Well, I can take this page and stick it into my art journal. I could add this page to my, um, my journal that I've already bound, the one that I've already worked on. I could start a new journal by binding it so I can create my own little book. I can do lots of things to it. I could stick a photo here. I could turn it into a scrapbook page. I'm not, there's no limit to it. I've just used an old piece of scrapbook paper um, with origami swans on the back to, to start, you know, start, start building something and having a bit of a play. 
Um, I am having to anchor her. She can't be floating in the middle of nowhere. Um, and I'm tempted to draw on her, but I actually quite like it being white. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of really liking where it's going. I think it needs some black splatters, so I will be doing that in a moment. So I'll pop that aside, pop that aside. And let's go for this grungy one here. I'm going to do my border. And it's nothing more than a confident hand. I'm not caring too much about how straight it is. Nothing else about this is perfect for heaven's sake, far from it. So I don't want my line to be perfect. I just want it done. And I can, you know, it might have been nice with a bit of hessian on here or um, that, that could have been great. I could have also added some staples for effect. That would have been nice. Or some string tied up around here for that little bit of texture. Um, that certainly would have been loving. Um, would have been lovely on here. Um, the, what else? Sorry, what was that, Sophie? What did you say? Oh, oh look, the, the whole idea is, is, as you all know, I'm, I'm very relaxed in how I create. Um, I don't generally start with a plan. Um, I, I tend to go with how things inspire me or I, I just go with what I've got in front of me and go, well, you know what, stuff it, use it or lose it, commit to it. Um, I really quite like that page now. Um, so, yeah, I think it, it works well. So splatters, this definitely needs some splatters. I can't find any black ink anywhere and I don't want to get off my chair again so I'm going to use my Stabilo pencil and I'm going to make some black ink to splatter with so my Stabilo pencil a bit of water actually a lot of water hang on water spray look at that Smokers tap for those smokers in the room. You know who you are. Um, yeah, no, I fixed my tape, my stapler, Annalise. Um, he bought me lunch, which was great because apparently I hadn't eaten today. Um, so timing was splendid on that. But um, the stapler wasn't as broken as I thought it was going to be. So a few black splatters make all the difference on that. And this one needs the black splatters as well. So definitely the trick to, to splattering is to get your brush juicy, juicy and moist. And flick. So it's a finger tap. It's not a wrist flick. It's got to be juicy though. It's not going to work if it's not juicy. Oh, hang on. But black and white's going to give it dimension, so I think it definitely needs those splatters. Um, and in a moment, I will go back through and just touch on all of these techniques and talk about that and just remind you what I've done. And then I'll take a photo and upload this, um, the photos of the finished projects with, um, oh, with the... A picture of the journaling by fives and who you should google on youtube and where i got this idea from because this is not my own idea and i might just take a photo of the mess that has surrounded me because it's not ideal um i'm just going to quickly hit this with the heat gun and then we'll have a bit of a chat about it Mm -hmm. 
All right, I have no patience for that. Who am I kidding? All right, so, 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 let's just do a quick recap. Um, so tonight I introduced you to the journaling by fives. Um, the reason I've got this big journal out is because it is written on a piece of paper and taped into the front of my journal. So the journaling by fives was something that I discovered on the interwebs on YouTube um, by Shannon Green and then um, Adele Toomey then introduced it to me and I worked with it from there. So we created a background with ink and paint to start with. We then collaged with recycled materials um, like paper and book paper and tissue paper. So we're building up layers in this order. Uh, we then did stamping and stenciling. So this was a really key important part because the stamping, I limited myself to five stamps and only stamped in black. And then the stencils, I limited myself to three stencils and I only stenciled in white gesso. Didn't give myself too much option so it wasn't so confusing. The focal point and the images, this is probably the hard bit because you have to find a key image to go on your page. So that was a little bit tricky and then adding your words was a bit easy and then you doodling to finish. So that is where that came from. So looking at the pages that I've created, um, and I have created my pages on scrapbooking paper, not in my art journal, because I will actually punch holes in these and add this to or start another um, loose leaf journal. So paper in the background, collage paper, paint, stamping, stenciling, all of those little bits and pieces, you can certainly see now that we're pointing them out. Then the other page that I did, so this is the scrapbook paper again. So this was the Sassafras Lass paper. No, it wasn't. This was the Studio Calico paper. And this one, we I use Lindy sprays in the background, which are gorgeous and shimmery and lovely. And then they've got the Heidi Swap bits here. We've got some book paper, some stamping the Scrap Effects Dream Girl that goes in here. Um, finished it off with some splatters of black. And then this is the messy page, but I'm really quite liking it. Um, this is the K & Co paper that I've had since the Middle Ages. And this one has got the cheddar paint with the night paint over the top and we've got some jelly print, some um, gel print papers through here, some alphas, some stamping, the frame smack bang in the middle as our focal point with our title and then our doodling around the edges. So I've got a shit hot mess here. Um, I'm going to take the camera off the mount, just if you get seasick, look away. Um, and oh, lights on. Um, and you can see that when you do something like this, you actually need to kind of have a, a, a small amount of preparation in the sense that I've got my stencils, my ephemera, my stamps ready, my paint here ready to go. There's a few little things that you have to have a little bit organised. So um, I got this off here so I can show you some of these close-ups on the page. And you can see some of these little details. Um, but, you know, it's Three art journal pages in two hours, I actually think is pretty good. Um, that shimmer from the Lindy sprays rocks my world. There's those vintage Heidi Swap elements on there. And then this is the page, the super random page um, with the alphas, the barcode strip from the paper, Michelle's gorgeous freaky peep. Um, totally super random. 
totally awesome uh and there you go so um all done i'm not going to turn the camera around so you can see my face i'm in my um whoops in my my jammy pants um my superhero jammy pants and um the studio looks like a bomb's hit it over there we have got all of your orders sitting on the table um so that's what i'm doing tomorrow morning from probably 5 a.m i'm going to get up and pack some more orders so i do need to go to bed um so don't forget tonight you've got 15 percent off alcohol inks until i do go to bed and i reckon you've probably got another hour because i go on a night trip for a while um but I'm going to love you all and leave you. Um, and I will post up these information, take some photos, go inside and post those up to the interweb. So thanks, guys. Have a splendid day, evening. Um, I, was, I would normally say go home, kiss your kids, wash your hands. But go and um, give your husbands a snog. Um, tell them that they're awesome because we don't tell them that enough. And um, I look forward to chatting with you all tomorrow. All right, guys. Love you later. Bye.